One of the things that Yoshimitsu was well known for in the game is his many stances. He has his Met stance, his Kensho stance, Dragonfly stance, Indian stance, Flea stance, the Sword stance, and finally he has his Back Turn stance. With all of this, he has a plethora of different means of attacking the opponent while in the stances. And while not in the stance in particular, he also has a lot of other moves that he can try using in the neutral or while he's close up to the opponent to then mix up or go for Oki and so on and so forth. Then Yoshi is known for having a lot of safe moves. In particular, he has a lot of safe strings in his kit that a lot of players dislike. Like for example, he has 1-1. He has 2-2, two, two, back 2, back 2-2 two, two in itself is kind of safe, but seeing that it has a little bit of push block, a lot of the times opponents can't really properly punish him with the 10 frame. And then if you're in your regular stance, it's minus 13, but it's still relatively safe if they don't know when to use a 13 or 12 frame move against you. I see a lot of opponents that don't properly punish this. Then you have your down forward 1, down forward 1 into 2. Your back ones, you got your down back twos, down back threes into your fours on hit though. Even even if not on hit, it's still relatively safe on the last hit if they don't know how to properly punish the down back threes. Your down back one isn't really safe, but the issue is that a lot of the players, they immediately assume that you're going to go for the follow up. And the follow up is also negative on block, as well as the first hit as well. It's minus 11. But they don't properly punish just simply because they think that the follow-up is going to be coming out. So you can kind of use this as also a safe option as well against the opponent. Then you have your down forward 4, and you have your down forward 2, which is his well-known 15 frame launcher that's safe on block at minus 7. You got forward 3, as well as your up forward 4, two of your homie moves in the neutral that you can use that is minus 9. Up forward 1 at minus 4, 4 forward 2 my minus 9. Side step one as well. And of course he has a lot of other stances that he can use that have their own safe options that he can go for against the opponent as well. Then when it comes to his overall mix up game and overall okay game, he is probably one of the strongest characters when it comes to that as well. He has good 50-50s that he can use against the opponent. Has decent wall carry. Has overall high damage. Might legitimately have the strongest wall Oki in the game. And is infamously known for his get off me button, the flash, which is 6 frames, and while in those sword stands being 8 frames. Now the two differences of these two moves is that while in your sword stands, you don't have the range, but it's 6 frames, so it's faster than your 8 frame version of your no sword stance flash. But if you do land your flash against the opponent, you get a free back 2-2. Two -two. And this is one of the reasons why a lot of players dislike Yoshimitsu, because a lot of his gameplay can be easily turned around by simply just pressing flash against the opponent. Especially if you're in your no sword stance. Because while you're in no sword stance, you get something bigger. You get a combo. Essentially granting him a lot of access to just punishing the opponent by being too aggressive against him. Then he has probably the best evasiveness in the game, like in terms of using mech stance by pressing back and down back pianoing it. You can kind of maneuver around. You also have your dragonfly stance, you can kind of maneuver around as well in the stance. As well as you're in your flea stance and using your 3 and your 4 to get away from your opponent. Or either just jumping against your opponent as well. And if pressing down, you can even duck some mids depending on the mids. It's not exactly like Xiao Yu's AOP, but it acts somewhat similar. 
But of course, his best evasive uh, move in the game is his back threes and back fours. This move alone can escape the majority of mix-ups and the majority of moves in the game. Though you still have to be careful if you're near the wall and you're facing the direction of the wall and spinning to that side, then you won't really get away from the opponent. It's not a iframe move, so to speak. It's still a physical move that the opponent can still hit you out of. So moves like homie moves can still hit you when using back threes and back fours. And depending on how you use your moves, like for example your running attacks, some running attacks can still beat Yoshi by attempting to do his back threes and back fours, like Jin's Demon Paul or the Machinimo's Demon Paul in general. Now let's move on to the cons of Yoshimitsu and what makes him not exactly super strong in certain departments of his kit. For one, his neutral game or his poking game is one of the worst in the game, I feel. And the reason why it's so bad is that anybody any character, maybe besides the bears and Jack, maybe Jack, they have the qualities of just stepping to the right on almost any attack besides the ones I will mention to get away from Yoshimitsu. For example, if you do your 1-1, it can be stepped to the right. Your 2-2 can be stepped to the right. Your down forward 1 can be stepped to the right. Down forward 4, stepped to the right. Your down back 1 step to the right back one down back two down back three up four three cd one oh that that was a mistake cd one back two forward two one and his down forward two all of these strings and or moves can be easily stepped to the right or sidewalk to the right. Now the moves in question that can't be sidestepped to the right depending on the circumstances. CD2, this move, it can be stepped to the right but it depends exactly as to what move that you're using up close against the opponent. So if you use your standing one, you can still hit the Brian or other characters like them. Maybe not Lily but I haven't really tested it out completely. But if you use your standing 2 instead, it can be stepped to the right. And down forward 1, you can't step to the right. If you use all their particular types of tricks against the opponent, like let's say for example using up forward 1 on block, you can still hit the opponent. Or if let's say you do something like down back 1, this still somehow ends up getting side step to the right. Down back 3, you can still hit them. Full crush on forward 4, which is a homie move, you can use this against the opponent if they do attempt to step you. You can also use CD2 to catch them off guard. Then the moves that does not work by attempting to step to the right, that you can still hit the opponent if they attempt this, is your down 2-2. Two, two. So you can use this against the opponent if they attempt to go and sidestep to the right, but they can step to the left to beat this move, but that's not something that's easily beaten because they don't they don't really won't know exactly if gonna be going for your down two twos against them but if they don't have to worry about down two two they can just mostly step everything else by stepping to the right side this also includes a lot of your other moves like in your stances like Kencho stance as well as your med stance or canceling out a med stance to go into back turn stance there's a lot of moves in this kit as well that can easily be stepped to the right you also have your no sword stance as well, in particular that has moves that you can't uh, step, or should I say that you can step to the right to beat it. I forgot to mention one thing though. One pro of one of his strings is 3-1. Now 3-1 is a homie move, at least the last hit is a homie move. So if even if they do end up sidestepping the 3, they may get hit by the 1. So if they just completely sidestep without blocking immediately, then they can hit, get hit by the 3-1. But if it's the 3, 2, 1 plus 2, then the follow-up strings may get blocked, or they can easily get side stepped. Sorry for the stutter. Then one big negative as well is that because of his back threes and back fours, this means that he has to have some kind of giveaway when it comes to his movement. And that is that his side steps are beyond one of the worst in the game, I think. I can't really say it's number one worst. The, the ones that take the cake is Kuma and Panda. They probably had the worst side steps in the game because of their big bodies. But Yoshimitsu probably isn't like maybe fourth place or fifth place worst character to have a side step. 
because he doesn't even doesn't really have really good side steps. A lot of the times you even see in my gameplay that I tend to complain a lot whenever I attempt to step a move from the opponent only to get hit by them anyways. Even when it's weakest to that side, I still get clipped. And it has to do with the fact that Yoshi has terrible side steps. They designed him this way, in fact, because they want you to use your back using back force. That lose health. But with the overall addition of his no sword stance amplifying his attacks that give him a bit more damage as well as giving him more health in return, then it kind of nullifies the effects of back three and back four. But if you use it too often, then even with the overall health gain from certain moves, it doesn't really make him that strong in the evasive department because you kind of have to play risky just to be able to get away. And the last thing is more of a nitpick. He has the most ambiguous hitboxes in the game, I feel. Whenever he attempts to go for a samurai cutter, let's say if I try doing it right now, you see the sword um, trace? It seemingly looked like it went to the leg, but it's still whiffed. And if I get a little bit closer, right there you can see that the sword trace definitely went through the leg, but it somehow still didn't hit the Brian. And this is another problem with the particular unblockable as well, that it can be easily sidestepped to the right if you are quick enough to get away from the opponent. As you can see right there, you can actually sidestep the move towards the right. But this is if the Yoshimitsu went for the Samurai Cutter and they're still facing the direction that the opponent was at that moment. So you can actually step to the right from this move. Then, of course, the CD1. CD1 also has very weird hitboxes at times because of the sword strikes. So moves that look like that should hit, like right here it hits pretty well, so it's really no problem with it. But when you're using Kangaroo Kick, for example, as is one of your staple combos with Gehosen, it whips. And the reason why is that you still haven't touched the hitbox. It seems like the move itself has a lower hitbox up top of the sword trace of the move than it does in the mid side uh, part of the particular hitbox of the move. It has more range in the mid area, but at the top area it doesn't. So you kind of have to use kangaroo kick and then time it correctly. Like right there to land your Gehosen. But it doesn't mean that there hasn't been moments in gameplay where Gehosen even at this certain range where it's perfectly good to use, that it'll still whiff against the opponent even though it looks like it should have hit the opponent anyways. So then what are my overall opinions on the matter of Yoshimitsu? Do I think that he's S tier? In my overall opinion, just to get it over with, I don't think that Yoshimitsu is S tier. But I do think that he's very strong. He is, he's much stronger in this game than he was in Tekken 7. A lot of useful new tools that he's gained, a lot of quality of life changes to some stances like for example Full Crash on 4-4 can now go into Indian stance by pressing down 3 plus 4. And the fact that he has also gained like moves like in Flea Stance, Forward 2, he can go into Dragonfly Stance. And the other quality of life strings, like let's say 3, 1, up, back, 1 plus 2, as well as the No Sword Stance, has more range and, much, and more push block. And one of his best homie moves on the neutral is his 4, 1 plus 2 wall in No Sword Stance. Has amazing range and is homing. Unlike a shit ass forward 3 and up forward 4, these are the worst homie moves that I've seen in a game in my opinion. They're very slow and easily uh, beatable or interrupted in my opinion. Then again, you do have your stance versions like your homing 412 in Kensho or your Dragonfly 412. Very good moves. So even with all of that, I still don't regard him as a BS tier because there's characters in the game that have similar movesets or similar tricks that he has. If there is one thing that Yoshimitsu is king in the game is his Oki setup. His damage is definitely much higher than Tekken 7, but a lot of characters in the game have high damage. Are we really going to complain and say that Yoshimitsu has high damage while other characters have high damage as well? Characters that don't shouldn't even need high damage like Xiaoyu, Fengwei, Dragunov, Alyssa or Eliza? Is it Alyssa or Eliza? So when finally Yoshimitsu get a bit of, you know, buffs to his gameplay in Tekken 8, now everybody wants to nerf him. But I understand the reason why they want to nerf his damage. It's because he has so many utilities. You shouldn't really give a character so many utilities while also giving him a lot of damage. That is why I also advocate for Xiaoyu to lose some of that damage as well, and some other characters as well. And then I think another particular reason why players don't like Yoshimitsu has to do with his guard break setup, I think.
With this alone, Yoshimitsu is considered to be very strong in the game. And mind you, he can do this in the corner stage as well, and at the wall. Though it is tricky to pull off, so if you manage to get the timing to pull off the Kencho into 2 into 1 plus 2 charge, you can actually catch people off guard with this if they immediately side Okeme. And it's even worse while you're in your heat state already. So this is a big reason as to why players don't like the guard break setup as well. If you're in heat state and you manage to pull off the guard break setup against the opponent, it just guarantees them a full secondary combo right afterwards. And of course, the other reason is that they don't like Flash. I think Flash by itself is the biggest reason as to why people don't like fighting against Yoshimitsu. I mean, they can somewhat tolerate the Oki setups and the Samurai Cutter bullshit that he does. You know, all the unblockables that he can do in the game, all of that, right? They can somewhat tolerate that. They just don't like the fact that if they're pressuring Yoshimitsu and he can just simply just do flash against them, they don't like that. But this is a legacy move that he's had before for the longest time. In fact, if you haven't played Tekken, I think it's Tekken 3 or Tekken 2, I don't remember specifically, but the older games, this move used to be an unblockable. It used to be an unblockable before. And even if he did the no sword stance, which I don't even know if he was, if he had this particular stance before, I can't remember. But I believe, regardless of what it was, it was an unblockable back in the day. Then they removed it in later uh, IPs of the game. And instead, what they done, if I remember correctly, is that this move had a bit of iframe. So if opponents were to attack him, it kind of worked like an actual parry. Which people don't seem to remember is that this move is not a parry. This is not a parry move. This is a hit move. You can still hit the Yoshimitsu out of the stance or out of the flash. So if they get hit, I mean the opponent, from flash, and if they somehow manage to hit Yoshimitsu out of the flash, that should be an intake that the move is not a parry move. So players need to stop thinking that it's a parry move. It's not a parry move. It's a regular hit move that just so happens to be very quick. One of the fastest startup moves in the game. And then in the newest like adaptations or the newer installments of the game, they removed, or I think they have, removed the iframe from Flash. So you can no longer use this as a type of iframe move against the opponent. So now you can actually hit Yoshimitsu out of the move. And I think they started doing that was in Tekken 5 or was it Tekken 4? No, 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 Tekken 5 and above, they started doing that. In fact, this move used to have iframe as well, and it no longer does. So again, Yoshimitsu is a strong character. Yes, I, I do agree that he's strong, but I don't think it's S tier. I think he's like A tier. A plus tier, if anything, if you know how to pilot Yoshimitsu. But if you don't know how to really pilot him all that well, and you just use the brain dead flow charts that he has in his kit, then he is definitely, I would say, either mid A tier or below A tier. That's what I think. Because it takes somebody with a lot of understanding of his kit and his stances to really apply the things that he has in his kit. But people want to blow it out of proportion because they're getting hit by Flash all the damn time because they're so impatient to getting, you know, their own turn back. So instead of just playing around with the overall skill sets that Yoshi has and figure out an anti-plan against him, they'd rather just spam against Yoshimitsu and do whatever against him. Which is really their fault in the, in the end of the day, but again, this is just my overall take with Yoshimitsu, because when I, whenever I play against a Yoshimitsu player, I don't feel the same feelings that they have. Where I think, oh, I hate fighting against a Yoshi player because he has Flash. Oh, I hate that he does Samurai Cutter uh, at the wall when he has Oki. No, I just think that if you've managed to allow him access to do that to you, that's your new, that's your fault. Because again, I had to go through this myself whenever I fight against a Yoshi player. And in fact, I actually like fighting against Yoshi players, because there's always something stupid that they'll do funny stupid not that stupid in terms of like like their intelligence stupid but that they do something funny and it's actually quite you know fun to see exactly what a yoshi player is going to do it against you like one of my favorite fights that i had even though it was very laggy was against flashy mitsu himself i fought against him and i lost the f i think it was like we had like a five set game together and i only won two sets against him like two sets, not full sets, but like two sets. But it was stupid laggy, but he was playing phenomenally even with all the lag that was happening because he's from the Philippines. 
I think it's from the Philippines. And I'm from New York. So you can kind of see how obviously it's going to be very laggy. So yeah, I, I don't think he's S tier. I just think that he's uh, about in the middle of A tier. I think that's what he's, he's at. If you look at players like Tracy the Rapper, Flashy Mitsu, like I just mentioned, Roses Never Cries, uh, Cannon Trench, and I Musician himself, the lord of the ninja manji clan uh i just i'm just saying that then yeah I, I can see why players think that he is stupidly strong but these are guys that are loyalists these are yoshimitsu loyalists all they love to do is play this character i love to play yoshi too but i also like to play other characters as well so i'm more like uh i'm more of a mokujin than anything but since i mostly post yoshimitsu content uh that's mostly what you tend to see anyways so overall i don't think that yoshimitsu is that strong i think i mean it's not as strong as people make him out to be is what i'm trying to get at uh players need to just learn the matchup more just like how i tend to uh eat my own words and i need to learn the matchup against harangue i tend to fail a lot when fighting against harangue players that are really good and i always bitch and moan that he is too strong that he's just too good up close but Harang himself has his own weaknesses. He definitely doesn't have a really good neutral game, but he has really strong end fighter game, if that makes sense. I don't know if that's the right word to use. But besides that, yeah, that's essentially what you're going to be getting. If you yourself have your own bad uh, personal matchups, then you need to just learn those matchups. And Yoshimitsu is one character that people just tend to always uh, overestimate, and in some cases even just full on just play like idiots against him. And he can just use that against you if you don't play well against Yoshimitsu. And I know that sounds very harsh, but it's the overall truth. Whenever I come across somebody who also plays Yoshimitsu and I play a different character, and they're doing something that I already know is a very cheap flowchart, I always tend to figure out the means to beat it because I know the character. And that's just something that I have the pri privilege of because I main the character. Even with all that being said, I still think that, yeah, I, I think I'm regurgitating the same thing. You know what I just said. So yeah, but he is strong. He's definitely in the middle of the A ranks. And yeah, that's about it. If you want to know more of my thoughts on the matter of Yoshimitsu, I do want to follow up with something else, but I feel like that's just going too far. In a sense that the video is going to be too long. If you like the video, give it a like, dislike if you want to, subscribe and receive more of my shit. Uh, hit the notification bell if you want to be notified of any new particular types of videos that I'll be posting on my channel. Uh, I do also have a Patreon if you also want to support me there. It's only a dollar if you want to support me and if you want to pay me more, I don't know. You can do whatever you want, baby. And yeah, that's it. Stay safe. Stay tuned.